Happy New Year, Oddings. It's your Ate Sapphire. So, one of my New Year's resolutions is to make my health a top priority, which is why I'm excited that our first episode of 2019 is sponsored by Care Of. It's an incredibly convenient way to take the vitamins and supplements you need. And if you're like me and aren't entirely sure what you need, Care Of has an incredibly easy online quiz. It seriously only took me five minutes. It asked me about my diet, health goals, and lifestyle choices, and then made a scientifically backed recommendation. So for me, Managing my stress and my sleep is really important to me, and Care of recommended rhodiola for my stress and magnesium for my sleep. I have a very busy schedule, so having my daily supplements in individual and personalized packets shipped right to my door is a huge time saver. And using Care of not only does good for your body, but for others too, because a portion of every sale goes toward the Good Plus Foundation, which provides expectant mothers in need with valuable prenatal vitamins. So join me in starting off the new year the right way. For 25% off your first month of personalized care of vitamins, go to takecareof.com and enter the promo code SS. Hey, I'm Sapphire. Wanna hear something scary? The Missing Ground. The following story is a new take on an old urban legend. There once was a couple, Daniel and Melinda, who seemed to be over the moon in love. One of the things that brought them together was their competitive nature. They liked to push each other to be the best versions of themselves. Of course, all the competitiveness was friendly and well-intentioned. It sometimes meant silly little games of tag here and there, or maybe some nights of hide and seek. They were both sort of adult children. After many years, they became engaged and were off to the races, competing with each other to see who could find the best venue for the best price. But there was one point of tension in the relationship. Daniel was incredibly jealous of Melinda's best friend from childhood, Angelica. He was convinced that this so-called friend was in love with his bride-to-be and she would try and sabotage the wedding by any means possible. Melinda always had to reassure him that he was overthinking things and that there was nothing to worry about. You have no reason to feel this way. Angelica is my oldest friend. Just tell me this, Daniel asked. Did you ever have feelings for her? Melinda paused. Yes, I have. But it was years ago, please, you have to understand. Daniel wasn't happy with this answer. You have to uninvite her. Are you crazy? She's in my bridal party. I can't uninvite her. I honestly don't know if I can handle seeing her there. It's our wedding day. It's supposed to be perfect. The couple stared at each other, both silently challenging the other to give in first. Melinda sighed. If that's what will make you happy, I'll talk to her. Months later, the day of the wedding arrived. The engaged couple had forgotten about their past arguments and were just happy that the day had come. Melinda ended up finding the best venue for the best price, her parents' large and lavish Victorian mansion. The ceremony was going to be held outside in the gorgeous gardens and the reception would take place inside. The guests were filing in and finding their seats while Melinda was hiding from sight near the end of the aisle. Suddenly, Daniel appeared next to her. Danny, you're not supposed to see She's me. She's here. Why is she here? You told me she wasn't going to come. Oh my God, she's sitting in the back. She's not in the bridal party anymore. You literally don't have to see or speak to her. Well, I did see her, and I just can't believe you'd do this to me. Really? You're gonna do this right now? At this point, the couple's voices were rising, causing the guests to turn and look over at them. Hey. You know what will be fun? Why don't we play a game of hide and seek with all the guests? That always cheers you up. And afterwards, I can talk to Angelica again. Deal? Daniel exhaled. I'm so sorry. I know I'm being ridiculous. I know that. I know she's important to you, and it's not fair of me to act this way. I love you. I love you too. Now let's play. I'll be it. The guests are all informed of the game of hide and seek before the ceremony, and they willingly participate. Melinda closed her eyes and began counting backwards from 30, and everyone scattered to find a hiding spot. The property was huge, so there was plenty of space. Ready or not, here I come! 
Melinda grew up in this house and knew every nook and cranny, so she had no problem finding everyone. Except for one person, the groom. So all the other guests began to help Melinda look for him. Melinda heard some people whispering that they thought Daniel might have gotten cold feet and ran away. After they searched the entire property, Melinda collapsed to the floor in tears. Angelica approached her. I know this isn't what you want to hear, but I think I saw Daniel running out the gates during the game. I mean, he could be coming back, but I don't know. I'm so sorry, Mel. The wedding was clearly no longer happening, so the guests returned to their cars and headed home, while Angelica continued to comfort the bride. You're my best friend, and I will always be here for you. Remember? She held out her pinky finger. Together forever? The bride smiled, wiped the tears from her eyes, and hooked her pinky onto Angelica's and said, no matter whatever. Years went by. Angelica and Melinda became closer than ever. Memories of old crushes resulted in casual dates, which led to a surprisingly fast engagement. The wedding venue? Melinda's parents' Victorian mansion. Melinda's parents felt a little strange that their daughter would want to plan a wedding at their home again, but they just wanted her to be happy. So Angelica, Melinda, and her parents began to clean out the manor. Melinda went upstairs to see if she could find some tablecloths and decor to use for the wedding. That's when she noticed a door. It wasn't there when she was a kid. Mom, was this door always here? Melinda shouted down the stairs to her mom, who replied, Oh, we added that room a couple years ago for extra storage. Melinda opened it to find a very messy and dusty room filled with boxes and furniture. In the middle of the room was a large antique trunk. There was a lock with the key still inside. Curious, she turned it and hoisted the heavy lid with both hands. Immediately, a putrid stench seeped out through the open crack. As new air flew in, old air came out. She dropped the lid on the side and covered her nose. She peered inside and her eyes went wide. The rotting corpse of a man, face stretched in anguish, lay battered and broken within the trunk. There were scratch marks highlighted with dried blood on the inside of the lid. The man's skin was leathery and stiff, just like the suit that hung across his gray flesh, the dusty and rumpled suit of Daniel. Melinda heard footsteps behind her. She turned around to find Angelica in the doorway. Angie, you said you saw him leave the property. You, you knew he was in here, didn't you? Angelica continued to stare, face devoid of all emotion. Angie, did you do this? We made a promise, Mel, and I wasn't going to let anyone get in between us. Don't you remember? She held out her pinky. Together forever, no matter whatever. Thanks for joining me today. Don't forget to go to TakeCareOf.com and enter the promo code SS for 25% off your first month of personalized care of vitamins. Want more Something Scary? You can hear more stories over on the Something Scary podcast, available for free on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. The links are in the description below. If you'd like to submit a story, send me an email at somethingscary@snarls.com. Like and share this video if it gave you the chills. And don't forget to subscribe to Snarls and turn on that bell for notifications. And if you dare, follow me on social media. Until next time, sweet dreams.